Well, hello everyone. This is Dennis, the pond engineer with US Koi Ponds. And this is another video. If you're here, it's probably because you want to know if a chiller can be used to cool a pond like this or whatever pond you have. Uh, there aren't many videos on YouTube. I myself did some research and I couldn't find people other than aquarium people that use chillers to cool a pond. So that's the purpose of these videos. Let's get to it. And this is what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna take a, a temperature measure of my pond, uh, but before we do so, I wanna explain how we're gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna be using a thermopan. This is pretty much the most known thermometers that chefs all around the world use. And the reason why I'm gonna use this is because this is an instant thermometer, which means that as soon as, as I stick that needle or pointy thing in meat, water, anywhere, it tells me instantly temperature. It's really now an 89 Fahrenheit ambient or air temperature. And let's confirm that um, with our trusty uh, iPhone here. We're in Falsher, which is just outside of Houston. Temperature reading, it's about 88 degrees. I know, oh, there you go, 88. So we're dead on. I have also calibrated or compared this thermometer with others. But let me tell you, this is a $100 thermometer. This is what chefs use. It's very, very accurate. So before I take a measurement of the temperature in my pond, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna drive you guys with us throughout Houston and we're gonna visit several ponds, maybe three or four ponds, and we're gonna take measurements of those ponds' uh, temperatures to then compare it to this one that's actually running on a chiller. Um, and just so you know how we're gonna do this, we don't like cross-contamination or anything like that, so I'm gonna be using alcohol. It's 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And the way we're gonna do it is that before I take any uh, temperature measurements for people out there that are gonna say, hey, you should have cleaned that. This is the process. We're gonna make sure we clean it, we sterilize it with alcohol, and then we're gonna go and measure several ponds. Again, cleaning it before we take measurements. So come with me, we'll go around Houston and see what the temperatures are and ponds some clients, friends. So come over with me. Well, we're here at Wild Rock Koi. This is our first stop. They were kind enough to let us test temperature in their tanks. So let's go inside and see what we can find. All right, so just as a reference, Houston temperature today is 90 degrees. Um, and we want to compare that with our tanks. All right. So first thing we do, we're going to clean our thermometer with alcohol. We don't want to cross-contaminate uh, when we measure from tank to tank. They keep everything very sterile here. So first tank, above ground tank, and the temperature reading is 83 degrees, as you can see there. That's Fahrenheit, of course. And we're gonna make sure we clean it real well with alcohol. And let's take a look at this one here. This is a plastic or vinyl uh, tank, also above ground. Just as a reference, we just wanna see. It's a little warmer, which is expected, because the vinyl doesn't hold temperature as well as, for example, wood is. Um, also, there's more water volume in these tanks that what we have here. So let's keep going around. Uh, let's measure this one here to see what we get. Um, again, make sure we clean it real well with alcohol. And this one, I'm gonna have to raise this. And this one's reading 83, 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I think this gives us a very good idea uh, as comparison of this pond. They're in a building that has no AC. We're coming from a whole week in Houston with uh, very high temperatures. We're hitting, you know, the high 90s. So they're still holding some of that temperature. 
Now we're gonna go see a normal backyard pond and try to find out what temperatures do we get. So follow me. All right, we're here at another client's uh, property. Uh, still the same day, I just wanna show you. Temperature in Houston, it's still 90 degrees. And the difference with this pond is that even though it's above ground, it's a concrete pond. Let's see if that makes any difference. Um, so following the same procedure, let's clean our thermometer with alcohol. Give it a nice wipe here. And let's see what the temperature on this one is. Hmm. Surprisingly, it's about the same temperature as the other one that was um, indoor. This one's at 84 degrees, same day. And we're still in the Houston area. So we already done above ground wood uh, pond that's indoor, even though it was not air conditioned. Uh, this one is a concrete pond. And let's go to another property and we'll keep, you know, having a few ponds we can uh, check uh, with the one that we have at house with a chiller. So follow me and we'll go to the next house. All right, we're here in the south part of Houston, still the same day. We've been driving around. Want to show you the temperature. Houston temperature is still in the 90s. This one also is above ground. It's made out of uh, four by four wood. And let's clean our thermometer here and compare this with the other ones we've done today. This one's 83, so it's uh, one degree Fahrenheit uh, cooler, probably because of the shade. This one, it's a better shade with the uh, sunshade plus a tree. Um, so, you know, that helps keep the water cooler. So come with me. I think we're gonna see one last pond before we head back to our house and I show you the temperature in my pond with a chiller. All right, we're here at another property. This time we're gonna measure the temperature on an in-ground uh, pond to see if we get any differences. Um, this one's not too deep, but um, I would say it's about 18 inches. It's a small, nice pond. We're in Houston, still. <laughs> temperature in the 90s, okay? And this one, is, even though it's covered, I can tell you it's, it's hot. So let's uh, see what we get. Again, clean our thermometer here with a uh, alcohol and this one shows 84 degrees all right so most of the pumps we've done today are basically consistent between the 83 85 uh, temperature let's go back home and compare it to finally the temperature we got at my pond with a chiller follow me All right, so now the moment you have all been waiting for. You already know from all the pumps that we took measurements that we're running around 83 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna try to put the Celsius uh, measurements somewhere here in the screen for all you people in different parts of the world that are watching this video. So let's take a measurement of the temperature in my pond. Uh, I'm gonna turn the uh, air bubbles off first here with this app. So you can see my nice fish. And before I take the measurement of my water, I wanna show you how I'm able to lower the temperature on this pond. So I'm gonna show you my chiller, the filtration system. And the reason we're doing this is because, you know, we're in the right in the middle of summer here in Texas, especially Houston. We've just came from a week where temperatures were around 100. 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And many people start asking questions in different websites and Facebook pages, how can I get my water temperature down? I've tried everything. Through years, you know, I added the sun shade or the sail shade, some people call it. Um, this pond is insulated. So when I build it, it has, 
insulation all around. I think, it, it, I think it's a quarter or three eighths of an inch foam insulation. And still, during the really hot, hot days of summer here in Houston, I was getting water upwards of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And maybe not all, not all of you know, but um, koi fish don't like warm water. They're cold-blooded fish, um, and their temperature has to be ideally between 62 and 78 degrees. Another problem with warm water is that after 78 degrees, the dissolved oxygen in water it's much, much less than what water can hold in saturation at lower temperatures. So you might start risking, you know, fish uh, dying because they can't get the oxygen of the water because there isn't any or very little oxygen. So lower temperatures tend to be very good for koi fish. I tried, you know, I put the sunshade. This helped a lot, uh, but still, you know, I was getting temperature high in the very, very, very warm or hot days in, in, here in Texas. So I investigated a little bit and this is what I ended up doing. So before we see the temperature, come with me, I'll show you how everything works. All right, so here we are in the filtration side of my pond and this is what we're talking about here in this video. First thing you're gonna notice for people that know about chillers is that this is an aquarium chiller, okay? It's an Eco Plus one horse power uh, water chiller and no they're not sponsoring us but hey echo if you want to contact us and make a sponsor we'll be more than happy to take your calls so anyways I was lucky enough to get this unit locally uh, I bought it used out of Craigslist uh, I would say about two years ago and honestly I'm not a mechanical engineer I'm a civil so I know I don't know too much about thermodynamics but I said hey you know I paid you know, a fairly cheap price for it, so why not? Let's try it. So I hook it up to my system, and basically the way it works is just like an air conditioner. Water comes in um, on one of these sides, one of those one inch pipes, PVC pipes. Water goes into the chiller, and the good thing about this unit in particular, and it's something that I researched long, because copper is not good for koi fish, and most of the chillers, the way the water travels through the internals are through a copper pipe, but this one in particular is titanium. That's one of the things that makes chillers so expensive because they use titanium, which is a very expensive metal. So there's a coil, a titanium coil, that kind of like goes back and forth, back and forth, and there's a refrigerant gas or liquid. Again, I'm not a mechanical engineer, but it cools the water as it passes through that coil and then it returns the water to the pond. Come over on this side and I'm gonna show you how it's plumbed. So I'm using the pump from the pond. I, I didn't add an external pump to run the chiller. The way I did it is that I tapped into the, after the water comes through all the filtration system, I tap with the T, that's a ball valve. I put a filter before it goes to the chiller to make sure that the water is ultra, ultra clean. So we got a filter, water comes through the chiller and then it returns back over here. And just to give you a teaser, <laughs> I don't, I'm not gonna tell you yet what the temperature is in the pond, but water coming out of the chiller right now is at 69 degrees. So remember, ambient temperature is at 88. Don't show this one, hold on. <laughs> this one. Now you can come here, 69 degrees. That's the temperature of the water coming off the chiller. Now, the volume of your pump is, of your pond, sorry, it's gonna determine how much the water will go down in temperature. Chillers are expensive to run because of course they run in electric, with electricity. This one is just one horsepower. I don't run it 24 seven. So in reality, I haven't seen the increase in my monthly electric bill. But if someone out there has a bigger pond than mine, mine is 1,800 gallons. If you're running or want to chill down or cool down the water on a 3,000, 4, 5, 10,000 gallon pond, and for you people in Europe, multiply by four roughly and gives you liters. So my pond is roughly around 
7,000 liters. Uh, but if you want to cool something bigger than that, be ready <laughs> to spend some money because not only the unit is expensive, but the power draw, of course, the bigger the unit, or if you have multiple units, it might start making a difference in your monthly electric bill. For me, again, I only use it to keep the water at a temperature that I know my koi love, which is around 80 degrees in summer. I try not to let the water go over that, and I just told you pretty much what, what the temperature is. But, you know, in order to use it that way, I think it works. It works for me, definitely. But let, let's go back to the pond and let's measure the temperature because I know you're all been waiting for that. So let's go back. Okay, so the moment of truth. Let's see what that one horsepower chiller has been able to do with my 1800 gallon pond in the past, I would say about 24 hours since I've been running it just for this experiment. So remember the other ponds that we measured temperature was around 83, 84. I think one of them was 85. My pond, it's currently at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So, what, what's the point? The point is that if you wanna cool down your pond with a chiller, you can definitely do so. Is it gonna cost money? Yes, it is gonna cost money. If you have a big pond, the, more, the bigger it is, the more water volume, of course, the more horsepower you're gonna need on that unit, the bigger it's gonna be your power draw and electric bill you're gonna pay every month, it's gonna be you know, more expensive. But it all depends on how much you value your fish. If you have a collection of fish that are either very expensive, that you have you know, put a lot of money into, or you have had your fish for a long time, I love my fish as much as I love my dog, and I don't mind spending the money. And on top of that, I was able to grab that unit from a guy that was closing his aquarium, and I got it cheap. But even for people that have a bigger pond, there, there's another possibility here on how to cool it. Uh, you might need more units, you might need a bigger unit, but it's doable. And again, I don't keep this pond at 74 degrees all the time during the summer. I just cool it down for this video. Normally, I run it around 79 to 80, and just to do that, I turn the chiller around eight o'clock in the morning, and I turn it off when the sun comes down around eight right now in summer. So it runs for about 12 hours a day, and with just those 12 hours, I'm able to keep the temperature constant at 80 degrees. Now, I knew we were shooting this video today, so, 24 hours ago, I cranked the chiller, put it in its lowest setting, and in 24 hours, it was able to drop the temperature even six degrees cooler than I normally keep it, just to make a point. So, another alternative, you know, if you already tried your sunshade, if you already insulated your pond, if you still want to bring that temperature down, a chiller for sure is another alternative. So, this is Dennis, the pond engineer with US Koi Ponds. If you need anything, just write down your questions down below. I'll be sure to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and click on the bell so you get a, a message when I put new videos. And we're gonna be making a lot, a lot of new videos with my awesome friend here, the videographer and the editor, Mr. Juan Pizarro. Thanks, Juan, for your time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye.